Thank you for purchasing your new Brute Jetter, manufactured by Jetters Northwest. This is Steve Jones, or Jonesy, if you've seen our Get Jetting video series on YouTube. This video is going to go through the unboxing and what to expect when you receive your new Brute Jetter. We will also go through basic component identification and how to set up your Brute so it is ready for you to fuel up and to get jetting. Now let's walk around the machine and get familiar with the different components on your Brute Jetter. First, this is the wireless remote control receiver box, which is included only if you ordered the optional wireless remote control system. If you didn't add the wireless upgrade, this space will be empty. On the top rear of the Brute is the 12 gallon water buffer tank with garden hose connection fitting and internal float valve. Those of you drawing off of a larger tank, you may want to use this as an antifreeze reservoir. Next to that will be either a five gallon gas tank, which is EPA carb compliant for service in any state, including California, or propane fueled models will have a 30 pound liquid propane tank installed here instead. Next is your gray onboard toolbox. That is where you'll find the nozzles and small accessories stored, as well as your manual, which is located on a flash drive. This is the 12 volt reel motor, which will not be present if you ordered a hand crank type of hose reel. Wireless models will have this jetting on off actuator and all models will have the red handled flow control valve for manual jetting on and jetting off control. Below is the water pump. Here is the oil drain plug, pump oil level sight glass and pump oil fill cap. Between the pump and the engine is the transmission gearbox. Here is the gearbox oil drain and gearbox oil fill points, while the gearbox oil sight glass is on the other side of the machine. Above is the engine muffler, and lastly on this side is the battery. Because all brute jetters will come with the battery disconnected for shipping purposes. Moving to the other side of the machine, this is the wireless throttle control and throttle cable, again only present for wireless control models. Next, the engine fuel filter, engine oil fill, and behind it, engine oil dipstick. The oil cooler, the secondary fuel pump, engine oil filter, and then the engine exhaust manifold. Next is the gearbox oil level sight glass, and lastly, the pulsation check valve. First, we have the auxiliary bypass quick coupler for connecting a bypass return hose from an auxiliary water tank to this yellow handled bypass direction control valve. The yellow handle should be up or pointed out when connected to an auxiliary water tank, or the yellow handle should be down when drawing water from the buffer tank. To the left is the red handled gate valve or knife valve, which controls whether the jetter is drawing water from the buffer tank above or drawing water from a larger auxiliary tank. The red handle should be pushed all the way in when drawing water from an auxiliary tank or should be pulled all the way out when drawing water from the buffer tank directly above. This can be confusing, but a tip here is to remember that the two valves should always be in opposite positions, depending on where you're drawing water from. A, if connected to a larger auxiliary water supply tank, the red handle must be pushed all the way in, while the yellow handle must be pulled up and out, pointed away from the jitter. Or B, if you want to draw water or antifreeze from the above buffer tank, pull the red handle out and push the yellow handle all the way in and down. Now that you have set the handles of the two valves in the proper position, let's turn our attention to the inch and a quarter drain plug down here at the bottom. If you plan to draw water from the built in buffer tank, you can simply leave this drain plug in place. But if you plan to make connections to a larger auxiliary water tank for supply, you'll need to remove this drain plug as this becomes the point where a hose will be connected between the brute jetter and that auxiliary water tank. Let's look at the front side and the control panel on your new brute jetter. Starting above, of course, is your hose and hose reel. Moving down and to the right, you have your exhaust extension. This is made to blow the exhaust out the door of your service van or service truck. When setting up your jetter, make sure that there is distance between that exhaust extension and any wall or partition 
or potentially flammable item that might be stored in your vehicle. Moving to the left, you'll see the sticker that shows engine throttle, fast and slow. Just to the left of that is either a toggle switch for wirelessly controlled models or a handle to move the throttle up and down on manually controlled models. Directly below the throttle control is the wireless actuator switch. Turn this to on or up if you plan on using wireless remote control. Up above and to the left is of course the key starter. You only need to have the keys in and use the key starter if you're going to control manually. If you have wireless control and plan to start and stop the engine wirelessly, you don't even need to put the key in. Directly below the key switch is the combination hour meter and tachometer. When the engine is off, it will read hours. When the engine is running, it will read tachometer or the RPMs of the engine. Moving to the left is the pressure gauge and directly below it, the pulsator control. To the left of the pressure gauge is the pressure regulator or unloader regulator valve. This will set the maximum pressure of the machine. And all the way to the far left is the red handle flow control valve. As the sticker shows, when the red handle is all the way up, the jetting or the flow is on, and when the red handle is all the way down, the jetting is off. It's important to note that this valve should always be either all the way up and on, or all the way down and off, nowhere in between. Lastly, let's look at the water strainer, which is in the middle down at the bottom. That's the black T-shaped item. This should be cleaned at least once a week, if not daily, and definitely after about 10 or 15 minutes of your first run. This unscrews by hand and is fairly self-explanatory. Thanks for taking the time to watch this Brute Jetter unboxing and setup video. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us here at Jetters Northwest or reach out to your local dealer and service center. On behalf of Aaron Daniker and the rest of the Jetters Northwest team, this is Steve Jones saying thanks so much for your business and get jetting.